Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Maras and in today's session, we're going to be talking about preparation or construction of SF and BM diagrams, particularly for a cantilever beam. So let's see what the problem has in store. Here we go. Now to begin, let me give you a tip. Whenever you're dealing with problems based on cantilever beams, always take the section from the free end. So what's the free end? A over here represents the free end. That means we're going to take this section from the left hand side. And whenever you take this section from the left, shear forces downwards and bending moment anti-clockwise. Well, if you've seen my previous problems, I always took this section from the right hand side. Okay. And there I took shear forces upwards and bending moment as clockwise. But in this case, since the sectioning will be done from the left hand side, the application will be slightly different. Well, shear force is going to be downwards and bending moment is going to be anti-clockwise. So let's go ahead and let's do this. Here we go. We have a section and we'll be considering the left hand side portion of the beam. Okay. To this section. Here it is. Now let's say this UDL is having a magnitude of say W Newton per meter. Okay. Now this section, let's say is at a distance of X meters from the left hand support. So essentially if we were to convert this UDL into some sort of a point load, we can do that pretty easily. Okay. So this is in one meter. W Newton. So in X meter, it's going to be equal to W X. All right. What else? Now at this cross section, we're going to have to deal with shear force. Also, it's going to be downwards and bending moment. It's going to be like anti-clockwise. So first of all, let me write sectioning between A and B. Okay. So the first thing that needs to be done is to make use of this static equation of equilibrium summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to zero we've got this vx downwards and wx downwards both of them downwards therefore both of them negative minus vx minus wx is equal to zero and you can write this in a better way vx is equal to negative of wx what does this mean it means that the shear force between a and b is a function of x that means if you keep on increasing the value of x the shear force will increase Okay. And vice versa. All right. So what we're going to do is we'll put the limits here. The value of X is zero here at B. The value of X is how much this is L by two. And here at C, the value of X is equal to L because the overall length of the beam is L and we are taking this distance of L from this point A from the extreme left hand side. Okay. So when you put at X is equal to zero, you're going to get the value of shear force at A. So the value of shear force at A will automatically work out as zero. And when you put X is equal to how much L by two, you'll be getting the shear force at B. It's pretty easy. Shear force at B is equal to L by two. So negative of W L over two. It's that simple. Next thing to do is to take the moment equation. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll be taking the moment about this point. Okay, fine. So again, this MX is anti-clockwise. Hence positive. Okay. What about this WX? Okay. Acting centrally along this portion. Okay. So this WX about this point is producing an anti-clockwise moment. Hence a positive sign. Name of the force is WX. But what else? It has to be multiplied with a per per perpendicular distance. So this is that perpendicular distance. All right. So this overall distance is X. Half of X is obviously X over two. So W X into X over two is equal to zero. So you can write this moment M X is equal to negative of W X square over two. Now the step is pretty easy at X is equal to zero. You'll get the moment at A. And obviously if you put the value of X is equal to zero over here, you're going to get the moment at A equal to zero, say Newton meter, whatever. I mean, this problem is unitless. Okay. And let's put X is equal to L by two. X is equal to L over two L by two. So square of, uh, so it's square will be L square over four, four into two is eight. So the value of moment at B will work out as negative W L square over eight. So that's it. So that was all about the SF and BM analysis for section between A and B. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and take the section between B and C. So let me just write this section between B and C. 
so let's have the section line let's consider the portion of the beam to the left of this section line okay so let's just say that this section line has been taken at a distance of say x from the free end that is from end a or from the left hand side okay now the first thing that we need to do is to provide the shear force okay according to the sign convention if you take the section from the left shear force downwards and the bending moment is anti-clockwise okay so the first thing to be done is to use static equation of equilibrium summation of f of y is equal to zero vx downwards negative all right what else we've got this udl and we're going to convert this udl into some sort of a concentrated or a point load like this okay so this is w acting from a till b or for a distance of l by 2 so in one meter the total load acting is w so for a distance of say l by 2 meters so the load acting in the downward direction is w l over 2 it's that simple so here it's going to be w l over 2 so vx minus vx minus w l over 2 anything else no everything has been worked out all of this is going to be equal to 0 so vx is equal to negative of w l over 2 so that's the value of vx now from this equation or i shouldn't say this as an equation from this expression you can say that the value of shear force between b and c is independent of x that means the value of shear force between b and c will remain unchanged okay or will remain constant which is equal to w l over 2 that's it okay so at x is equal to l by 2 here that is at point b the shear force will be minus w l over 2 and again at x is equal to l it's gonna remain unchanged shear force at c will again be equal to w l over 2 fine now let's go ahead and let's have the moment equation so equal to zero let's take the moment about this point okay so we've got this uh, what do you call this udl uh, we've got this moment mx all right so since this is anti-clockwise you have to take this as positive okay what about this that's the load and that's the perpendicular distance so we have to work this out how much is this distance and how much is this so guys watch carefully this is x all right what about this this is l by 2 okay so this this distance is how much x minus l over 2 what about this one this is l by 2 and half of l by 2 is going to be l by 4 l by 2 divided by 2 is l by 4 so this essentially this overall distance from here till here i can write this as x minus l by 2 plus l by 4 so, so that's the distance okay minus mx again this uh, converted udl sort of into a point load is uh, creating an anti-clockwise moment here therefore a positive sign w l over 2 multiplied by the perpendicular distance that's the perpendicular distance x minus l by 2 plus l over 4 is equal to 0 now let me frame this moment equation in a better way mx is going to be equal to minus w l by 2 x minus l over 4 so that's the expression for moment equation and now what you need to do is you need to put the values of x or the limits of x x is equal to l by 2 you're going to get the moment at b okay so just put in over here l by 2 you will finally get the moment at point b which is going to be equal to negative of w l square by 8 it's that simple and when you put the value of x is equal to l you're going to get the moment at point c which is going to be the maximum okay so in case of cantilever beams the moment value is maximum at the fixed end always remember this you're going to get this value minus 3 w l square over 8 all right so let me go ahead and highlight all the values that we've obtained so far now finally the time has arrived to make the sf and bm diagram so let's have the beam okay now let me have the vertical lines from all the points a b and c let me have the baseline for sf and this is for pm diagram any positive values above this negative values below this and same thing goes for the bending moment values also now first of all let me plot the shear force diagram va is equal to zero okay we, we're going to start from here right hand side okay vc negative wl by two 
okay downwards vb negative wl by 2 okay same thing va it's zero here between b and c between b and c this vx was independent of x that means it's a constant okay that means it's gonna be a simple straight line like this between b and c then between a and b between a and b we have a sort of where is it an equation of a line so that means if you keep on increasing the value or decreasing the value of x uh, th there, there is going to be a corresponding change in shear force value also. Okay, so therefore these two points have to be joined with sort of an inclined line. Okay, so that's it. It's that simple. And then finally, let's go ahead and make the bending moment diagram starting from here. Moment at C, negative three times W L square over eight somewhere here. Okay, then shear, then bending moment at B, somewhere along this vertical line minus W L square. Okay, then it's going to be same A, obviously zero. At the free end, the bending moment is always zero in case of a cantilever beam. Remember that. Now, between two these two points, B and C, B and C. All right. What sort of a moment equation did we have? We had this moment equation. That means it was some sort of an equation of a line. And hence, these two points will be joined with the help of a simple line. What about the uh, moment equation between A and B? A and B. Where is it? A and B. Yeah. This equation x square sort of resembles to that of a parabola okay and hence uh, the points in between when joined okay it will form some sort of a parabola or a curve simply like this so in case of a cantilever beam always remember the bending moment values that you're going to obtain are negative negative value indicates um, a case of what you call hogging hogging okay and when the load is applied the beam would bend something of this sort this is exactly what you refer to as hogging. All right. So, guys, that was all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query, do write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them. And if you believe that this video tutorial has enhanced your knowledge of engineering mechanics, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel, and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification. So, that was all from my side for today. And I'll be back with more such videos in the future on mechanics, on drawing and many more subjects also. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care. Have a great day and keep learning.